This video is a review of the chapter on the Schrodinger equation and the particle in a box model system. So the Schrodinger equation we have here, uh, minus h bar squared over two times mass of a particle times second derivative of the wave function psi of x with respect to spatial position x, if it's just a function of x, plus the potential energy v of x times psi equals the total energy times the wave function again. This is the Schrodinger equation, and this is the function that we try to solve for our wave function and for our total energy for whatever given model system we have. If we specify a given potential energy and a given domain, like minus infinity to infinity in x, then we have specified all we need to be able to solve the Schrodinger equation. So some other useful concepts that are going to come into play here include operators. An operator is just something that takes an object and does something to it to create a new object. So in mathematical notation, an operator could be some mathematical function here, which acts on this f of x and turns it into the new function g of x. Some particular operators we'll be very interested in are position, which is just multiplying times x, and momentum, which is which is acts through minus i h bar times the uh, first derivative with respect to x. So it will differentiate this function here. Some special properties of operators include eigenfunctions and eigenvalues. And an eigenfunction and eigenvalue happen when you have an operator acting on a function and the resulting uh, thing on the right hand side is a constant times the same function again. In that case the function is referred to as an eigenfunction of this operator and this constant is referred to as its eigenvalue. So a particular eigen, uh, eigenvalue equation is the Schrodinger equation so we can rewrite this equation up here in terms of a Hamiltonian operator time acting on psi of x and then that equals our total energy times psi of x. So the Schrodinger equation is an eigenvalue equation. Once we have this wave function, once we have this psi of x, we need to know how to interpret that. So we interpret it through what is called the Born interpretation, which is that the complex conjugate of the wave function times itself, which is equivalent to the absolute magnitude of the wave function squared, times dx, some small region of space, is the probability that you find the particle between x and x plus dx. So the square of the wave function gives a probability density function for where a particle is likely to be located. So that tells us that <clears throat> the wave function is a way for us to know where the particle is likely to be. We then looked at the particle in a box model. And for the particle in a box model, <clears throat> we have that our boundary conditions are that the potential energy of x equals infinity outside of this region 0 and L. So if x is less than 0, potential is infinity. x is greater than L, potential is infinity. And inside this box from 0 to L, the potential is 0. Solving the Schrodinger equation for the energies in this case, you get that the energies are quantized depending on some integer n. And the energies are Planck's constant squared times n squared over 8 times the mass of the particle times the width of the box squared. For this interpretation of the wave function squared as a probability density, we need to enforce a condition called normalization. So the integral over all space, so minus infinity d to infinity if the particle has just x, of psi star times psi, the wave function squared, has to equal 1 because this means that there has to be a 100% chance that we find the particle somewhere in space. So taking this probability density and integrating all over space, it has to give us a certainty of finding the particle somewhere. So solving this for our wave function for the particle in a box, we get what's called a normalization constant out in front because this whole integral here equals L over 2 for sine n pi x over L. So the inverse square root of that is square root of 2 over L. And that ensures that if we plug this into here, we'll get 1 for certainty that we find the particle somewhere. So the particle in the box is really useful as a model system for the UV vis absorption of conjugated polyenes. So we have some conjugated polyene where we have electrons filling up pi orbitals all the way up until some certain level where we have the highest occupied molecular orbital. And then some photon is absorbed and it promotes an electron from the HOMO orbital to the LUMO orbital, the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. 
And this change in energy is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency of the photon, which h nu is just the energy of that photon, also hc over lambda. And deriving out uh, the expression in terms of the number of double bonds, we get the qualitatively correct prediction that if we have p double bonds, that the wavelength of the photon which is absorbed is approximately proportional uh, asymptotically to the number of double bonds here. So the wavelength increases with the increasing number of double bonds. For calculating properties, once you have a wave function, we can look at average position and momentum, and that's the average value of or expectation value of an operator, for example, A, is taken by doing the integral over the entire range of the wave function of psi star times the operator acting on psi. So if we plug in this formula for the operators of position and momentum, we find average position is in the middle of the box, L over 2, average momentum is 0. And then you can act on an operator subsequently again. You can say x squared, which is just acting on x twice, or p squared, which is just doing p twice, which would be minus h bar squared times second derivative with respect to x. And then you get these values here for what the expectation of x squared and p squared are. And this is very relevant for the uncertainty principle because we know for the uncertainty principle that the uncertainty in x times the uncertainty in momentum must be greater than or equal to h bar over 2. So the formula for how we uh, calculate the uncertainty in, a, in, a, uh, in an operator or an expectation value is done by the following formula. That's basically the operator minus its expectation value squared acting on the wave function times the complex conjugate and then integrated over all space and taking the square root to go from the variance sigma squared to the standard deviation sigma. And this is equivalent to the expectation value of the operator squared minus the expectation value of that operator, which is also then squared, so, and then square root of that. So taking the values we have here, the uncertainty for particle in a box does end up being greater than h bar over 2 and increases as you go up to higher energy levels at higher levels of n. Extending this to the three-dimensional particle in a box, we have a very straightforward way. You can separate variables and get a, dimension, a wave function which depends on just x, y, or z at a time. Plugging them back together, we get a three-dimensional wave function which has a part which depends on x, a part which depends on y, and a part which depends on z. And then the energies of all of these, these are products for this wave function here. So a wave function in multiple dimensions is a product of the individual wave functions. For the energies, the energies just end up being a sum of the energies in the individual dimensions. So you have a part that depends on the energy of x, the energy of y, and the energy of z. And when you have certain symmetries, like for example, the length in x, the length in y, the length in z, if a equals to b, or if b equals to c, or if they're all equal to each other, any combination, when you have some type of symmetry, this leads to energy levels which are equal because there are multiple ways to achieve the same energy. This is called degeneracy when you have multiple energy levels at the same energy. So something which is the only a uh, quantum state at that energy level would be said to be singly degenerate. If there were three states, that would be triply degenerate, and six states would be called six-fold degenerate, etc. So for the 3D particle in a box, there are many ways to achieve uh, degenerate energy levels if the length is the same in all three dimensions.